Hello YouTube, Herman Williams here again. Have you ever considered bankruptcy? Are you perhaps considering bankruptcy now? How does bankruptcy work anyway and what are the long-term consequences? Well today we're going to talk about all of those things and more, but before we get started let me take a moment to solicit your ideas for future topics to help you manage your money. This topic was actually suggested by one of my subscribers. So if you have topics that you would like to see discussed on this channel, please leave your suggestions in the comment section below. I want to discuss things that are relevant and beneficial to you. Now on to today's lesson, bankruptcy. I'm sure you've probably heard that filing bankruptcy is the worst thing you can do and that it will haunt you for life. Often when someone is considering bankruptcy, they're at a pretty low point financially and often feel like all hope is lost. I know some of you may be fans of Dave Ramsey and have heard Dave say that you should never file for bankruptcy. Well, if you know Dave's story, you also know that he too filed for bankruptcy at one point in his life. I totally understand why he tells people not to file for bankruptcy, but I also know that for some people, their situation may dictate that bankruptcy may be the best option for them at that point in time. Now don't get me wrong, I am not trying to suggest that anyone should file for bankruptcy because they think it's an easy way to get out of debt. First of all, it's not that simple, and secondly, it's not something that should be taken lightly. What I hope to do with this video is arm you with the knowledge you need to make an informed decision if you find yourself facing such a tough situation. I'm also going to give you some tips on how to possibly recover from bankruptcy faster than you thought so that you can get back on track to reaching your goals of financial security and independence. First, let's talk about the different types of bankruptcy and which ones may be of benefit to you. There are actually six different types of bankruptcy, but only two of them pertain to individuals, so those are the two that I will focus on today. The two that are used by most individuals are Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. You should also know that according to Investopedia, which is a financial literacy website, a significant amount of people declare bankruptcy because of costly medical expenses. Are you listening, U.S. Congress? If you want to reduce the amount of bankruptcies and strengthen the economy, then reduce the cost of health care, please. Two other common reasons that people file for bankruptcy is losing employment and poor financial decisions or excessive spending. I guess you could argue that that is really three reasons, but I would also argue that excessive spending is a poor financial decision. So first, let's break down Chapter 7 bankruptcy. The first thing that you need to understand is that bankruptcy is a legal proceeding that is filed in a federal court. The second thing you need to understand is that falsifying information or hiding assets when filing for bankruptcy is a criminal offense. Now that we got that out of the way, what is the process for filing Chapter 7? Well, Chapter 7 bankruptcy is for people who have, for whatever reason, found themselves in a situation where their income is not enough to cover their essential living expenses and pay any of their debt. That is part of the criteria for Chapter 7s. It means you don't have the capacity to pay your debt. So step one is that you must attend government mandated credit counseling. The U.S. Trustee's Office maintains a list of approved agencies, and I will provide a link to that website in the description below so you can search by state, or if you know your judicial district, you can narrow your search that way as well. In most cases, you must get credit counseling within 180 days before filing for bankruptcy protection. Step two, file your forms with the court and pay the fees. The fees are usually between three and four hundred dollars. I will also leave a link to the government website where you can obtain all the forms you should need. The paperwork is pretty extensive and you must provide the information on all of your assets, income, expenses, and any property exemptions you may have. Also, part of the application process is what is known as the means test, which will determine if you have enough income to pay even a portion of your debt. 
If you have enough income, you may have to file Chapter 13 instead, but the means test will determine that, and the, that form is also on the website. If your income is low enough, you may qualify to have the fees waived, and that application is also on the website. See, I'm giving you everything you need to get ready to go to court if you should ever need to file for bankruptcy. Oh, and in case you were wondering, if you file bankruptcy, you will have to go to court but I'll get to that in just a moment. Once the filing process is complete, an automatic stay goes into effect. This will stop the harassing phone calls and wage garnishment, and in some cases, it, it can also stop repos, foreclosures, and even evictions for the duration of the debtor's case. Step three, the court appoints a trustee and the debtor's assets become part of the bankruptcy property and are evaluated by the trustee. Step four, a meeting is held by the court and the debtor must be present to answer questions from the trustee and any creditors that may want to attend. Yeah, that part probably won't be much fun, but if you have a legitimate case, all you have to do is answer the questions truthfully. Step five, the court decides whether you are eligible for chapter seven. If denied, you may still qualify for Chapter 13. Step six, the trustee decides what assets can be used to pay creditors. Some assets are exempt from liquidation. For instance, your home, furnishings, or personal vehicles, and any assets that are deemed essential to earn a living. Some of the things that are not exempt from liquidation are investments, jewelry, artwork, just to name a few. The rules on what is, what is exempt and what is not can vary from state to state, and there's also a federal list of exemptions, and 17 states allow you to choose either federal or state exemptions. In some cases, you can negotiate to keep some non-exempt property if you can come up with enough cash. Maybe you have some jewelry that's been in your family for generations and you don't want to lose it. The trustee can set a value for that jewelry and if you come up with the amount of money, you may be able to keep it. Step seven, the debtor must resolve any secured debt by either returning the property or getting current on the debt. So if you are behind on your car payments, guess what? You must catch up the payments or turn the car in. You have to remember, Chapter 7 is designed to eliminate debts that are beyond your means. Step 8. Within three to six months, you will receive a bankruptcy discharge notification. The automatic stay is lifted within a few weeks and your case is closed. At this point, none of your creditors that were discharged can come after you. Now the bad news. A Chapter 7 bankruptcy will m remain on your credit report for 10 years from the filing date. More bad news. Chapter 7 will not clear child support, most student loans, or tax debt. Okay, one more piece of bad news and then some good news. Every situation is different, but a bankruptcy could drop your credit score by 200 points or more. Exactly how much it drops depends on a number of factors, but your credit score will likely take a significant hit. Now the good news. Even though bankruptcy will remain on your credit report for 10 years, if you will take some simple steps and be diligent about managing your finances, you can have your credit score back in respectable range within 18 to 24 months. Step one of getting that done is, as soon as your case is closed and your debts are discharged, apply for a secured credit card. Discover has a good secured credit card that you may qualify for and it has no annual fee. Once you get this card, use it for small recurring expenses like gas for your car. Here's the trick to using this card to rebuild your credit. Never, ever allow your balance to exceed 29% of the credit card's limit. At 30% utilization and above, your credit score will take a hit. But by keeping it under 30%, you, you are demonstrating that you can manage your debt. Also be sure to pay the balance in full every month. Step two of rebuilding your credit, pay all of your remaining debt on time, every time. 
Do not allow late payments to show up on your credit report. Late payments fall under the credit history section of your credit report, and this is the most heavily weighted section, making up 35% of your credit score. This is also the section where your bankruptcy will appear, so the more you demonstrate good behaviors in this area, the less impact a bankruptcy will have. Step three of rebuilding your credit. If you have a car that is paid for or other collateral that you can use, take out a small personal loan that you can pay off in one year. Because the collateral is worth more than the loan and the bank also knows that you can't file bankruptcy again anytime soon, you will likely get approved. Every situation is different and not everyone will qualify. If you do qualify, be prepared to pay a higher than normal interest rate due to the bankruptcy and where your credit score might be. Only borrow what you know you can afford and again, make every payment on time. Step four, do not apply for any other credit. Even if you are approved, this will be considered a hard inquiry and it will drop your credit score. It won't drop a lot, but at this point, we're trying to make it go up, not down. So even if it's only temporary, we don't want to drop your credit score. If you will follow these steps, you can recover from a Chapter 7 bankruptcy faster than you might think. So what about Chapter 13? Chapter 13 is not a discharge of debt, but rather a reorganization of the payment plan for that debt. Payments are made to a trustee who did then distributes the money to your creditors. Several of the steps in chapter 13 are the same as those for chapter 7. You must get credit counseling, except with chapter 13, you will also develop a repayment plan during your credit counseling sessions. You will also need an attorney with chapter 13, and the attorney can assist in developing your repayment plan. You will file your paperwork with the court and submit your repayment plan and pay your fees at that time. After filing, an automatic stay is put in effect and a trustee is assigned, just like in chapter seven. You will have to meet with your creditors in court and within 45 days, a confirmation hearing will be held. Your lawyer will also work with your creditors to try to negotiate the best terms possible on your behalf. At the confirmation hearing, the court could rule that you have insufficient income and change the filing to chapter seven. After your repayment plan is complete, the record of bankruptcy remains on your credit report for seven years from the date of filing. Also, during the repayment period, the debtor cannot obtain any new debt without the approval of the court. So if you need to purchase a car for transportation during the repayment period, you cannot do so without getting approval from the court in advance. The best way to recover from chapter 13 is to have an attorney who can ne negotiate the best terms and pay the debt in the shortest time period possible. Because chapter 13 is at least a partial repayment of debt, it likely won't hurt your credit score quite as much as chapter seven, but you will still see a significant hit. Coming out of this repayment plan, you must commit to doing some of the same things I suggested for chapter seven. Pay your bills on time, every time. Never have a balance higher than 29% of your credit limit on any credit card. Staying under 10% utilization is even better. If the terms of your repayment plan allow you to keep your credit card accounts open, do not close them out out of fear of getting into debt again. If you close the account, you will lose the history associated with that account and that will likely lower your credit score. If you don't trust yourself with the card, then lock it away in a safe place or you can cut up the card to keep from using it, but do not close the account. When you file for bankruptcy protection, you are making a commitment to the court to change your financial behaviors. And you know what I always say, change your behaviors and you can change your life. So until next time, behave well.